I'm not a futurist. I've never been able to, or never, never tried to predict what the future might be. I can tell you 15 years ago, there's no way I thought we'd be doing what we're doing in a sailing boat. It's just... You know, you see the boats sailing along and you go, how does this happen? How has this happened in such a short time? We're talking about hundreds of percent of change in our sport in one and a half decades. No other sport has done this. This is very unique and pretty amazing. And I think one of the reasons for that is, is down to 3DI. The, the manufacturing technique really lends itself to having light sails because weight is important and able to handle very, very high loads because if you think about it, these boats are always sailing in a lot of apparent wind speed. So there's that side of it, but the other side is also over you know, 35 years, 40 years even, uh, we've been developing our modelling tools. And we've put a lot of effort into an FEA model membrane, which worked for this new twin skin mainsail idea. So I think those are the two key things. It's the manufacturing process and the tools we have, and of course, the designers. How do, how do you design a sail? Boy, that's a loaded question. You just design it, right? It just comes out and it's great. You know, in every America's Cup team, all the sales are North sales. All of those designers work for their individual teams, but they are also still working for Norths. I was involved uh, before 3DL came in. The first uh, you know, five years of my career, 3DL didn't exist. 3DL back in the early 90s and then 3DI sort of from 10, 2010 onwards uh, are two massive revolutions in structural um, technique. Even though we're now 14 years, 15 years into 3DI, we're still learning lots and lots. How long does it take to design a sail? I could say three years, but yeah, it's a three year process to sit there and design an individual sail. Well, at this stage of the campaign, we were actually designing and building sails reasonably regularly. We were working on an inventory of sails roughly every one or two months. And again, we don't just design a sail, we're designing an inventory of sails uh, because they've all got to work together. Do I like my job? I think I love my job. Yeah, it is, it is very satisfying, especially being part of a team which is so driven. You want to be part of that. That's part of the reason I love doing this job. I mean, it's intense, it's, it's hard, but ultimately when you know you're contributing to you know, something really great, uh, that is extremely satisfying. But we're, we're dealing with speeds that were just unimaginable 15 years ago. We just couldn't imagine it. Oh, so you go back to the last time the America's Cup was in, in Spain, like down in Valencia in 2007. You know, we'd go upwind, we'd get excited if we went 9.1 knots and not 9 knots. You know, now we're three, four times that speed. And yeah. that's the pinnacle of the industry, so every time there's an America's Cup, uh, it, it's a big deal, like you say. You're nervous and you just don't know how it's going to go, you know. That's always one of the really cool things about the America's Cup itself, is you just don't know. Boy, this is going to be a big event in, the, in this town. And, uh, you know, being in Europe, I think, is very good for the event. Well, our expectations as a team, that's easier. Our expectations are to win. But as a team, we expect to win. We also always hope to win as well. And, you know, we've won the last two events. That's no guarantee we win this one. There are smart people and good teams all around this harbour.